What's up, guys? It is bright and early on a Sunday morning, so we're going to get back on the CD collection this week. I apologize for taking about a week off uh, from everything, but we did adopt a new puppy last week, and it's just been uh, chaos uh, and, and then playing with the dogs. But if you've ever owned a puppy, you know that uh, you can kind of empathize with my plight. There's not much time for much else because she is into absolutely everything uh, i think we're on episode 90 uh still in the l section we're just going to jump right into this with a band that it's really hard to uh kind of pinpoint their their sound down to a particular style they have aspects of like this aggressive style of thrash metal uh, kind of fused in with even sludge metal and i know that those are like contrasting styles but this band is able to pull that off uh this is lair of the minotaur uh, and this is their uh, cannibal massacre ep uh, it almost looks like it would be brutal death metal from that artwork but it definitely is not uh this was released on southern lord recordings i don't see a date uh maybe 2004 Five is when this one came out. It's been out for a little bit. It's pretty neat. It's on this little mini disc, uh, so it's not going to play on every CD player, but uh, it's a pretty cool little collectible thing to have. There's the uh, inside artwork there, but a, a pretty decent little EP there. Uh, next up, I have their full length. Uh, this one is entitled The Ultimate Destroyer. This was also lit released on Southern Lord Recordings. Uh, this one, I mean, definitely the sludginess uh, is very prevalent in this particular full length. Probably my favorite album from Lair of the Minotaur. Uh, being like Southern um, U.S., born and raised, that, that kind of love for sludge, that love for the sludge metal sound is just kind of ingrained in me at this point. But uh, good stuff here from Lair of the Minotaur. It's, it's just such a hard band to to describe their sound because it is so varying varying and they're able to pull it off so well uh, and then I have their full length entitled war metal battle master uh, this one's a bit more aggressive uh, it's kind of a uh, they call it a concept album revolved about uh, revolved around resolving conflicts with the use of an axe so you definitely kind of get that feeling of aggressiveness and uh and it just kind of attacks you for the duration of the album. Uh, good stuff here as well. But that's all that I own from uh, Lair of the Minotaur. But it is one of those bands that I do do thoroughly enjoy. Uh, next up, we have a kind of atmospheric doom uh, post-rock band, uh, for lack of a better term. They kind of get into like almost gothy uh, territory at times. This is Lauba de Morgan. I believe this band is French. And uh, the name of the album is The Essence Remains. I blind bought this off of uh, Redstream Records when I was doing kind of a, a bulk order from their eBay store several years ago. Uh, it's pretty good. I, I do like this. It's a bit softer than some of the other stuff in my collection. But uh, for what it is, it is a very good album. I did find myself returning to it quite a bit. Um back when I when I first purchased it. Uh, at lately, it's kind of just been a placeholder on the shelf, but it is something that I could pull off. I'm sure, even though I haven't listened to it in quite some time, uh, pull it off today and listen to it and still enjoy it just as much. was released through uh, My Kingdom Music back in 2012. I knew it had been some time since, uh, since I even picked that one up. Uh, changing gears a little bit, we have... Uh, some ambient uh, black metal. It has some doom metal aspects going on as well. Uh, this is a band called Lawsu with uh, their full length entitled The Death, the Death of a Star. I believe this is their debut full length. Uh, they do have a sophomore release out that I do not own, but this one's pretty good. Um, gets a little more abrasive at times than what you would expect, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, pretty good. I believe this band is out of Brazil. Uh, next up, I've got a little stack here of uh, Lamb of God album. So if you hate Lamb of God, you can kind of skip forward a little bit because there's going to be uh, quite a few uh, coming up here in a row. This is their debut full length entitled New American Gospel. I remember 
when uh, this came out, I was in high school, and everyone was just, all, you know, this is the, the best thing ever is kind of uh, the way that, that it was looked at. I, I do enjoy it. I know that's almost taboo to say uh, when someone, you know, you see me showing stuff like this sometimes and you scratch your head just because it's not the, the type of stuff that I normally show, normally listen to. The mainstream stuff, I, I do enjoy sometimes, but uh, it's not you know the top of what I what I pick up anymore so when I show something like this some people are like wow I can't believe he actually has that but uh, I did I do still like this one uh, I know their groove metal sound is a turnoff for a lot of people and, and I get it it's maybe it's just a, a nostalgia feel for me enjoying this band uh, next up I have uh, Ashes of the Wake I am missing uh, As the Palaces Burn and I thought I had that album so I'm not sure what happened to it I'm missing that one and the Wrath album so at some point if I can find them cheap I'll probably uh, pick those back up but it's not just a um, top priority to add back into the collection uh, we have the Ashes of the Wake full length I, I never spent a whole lot of time with this one and I'm not sure why it was a pretty pretty decent album and uh, I don't know why I just I never really spent the time with this one that that I thought I would and I still I still to this day don't know why I have it and then I, I have the uh, live album I got this at Hastings uh, for for next to nothing at one point <clears throat> the uh, Philadelphia live album I mean it's a live release I, I don't I'm not real big on the uh, live albums a lot of times so that one's just kind of a filling a hole in the collection there and then we have what is probably my most listened to uh, album from this band this one is sacrament and i know that's kind of cliche uh that this is one that i think that that probably became their most mainstream their most popular uh, a lot of these songs on this one you have heard before this is a band that you can play and uh your friends that aren't super into extreme metal aren't super into heavy stuff this is one that they're probably familiar with so uh next up we have uh kind of a, what was a bit of a polarizing album this is resolution uh i may be wrong on this uh, i haven't pulled these off and listened to them in quite some time but uh from what i remember this is the one where they kind of teased bringing in like the uh the clean vocal parts and uh, a lot of people didn't like that. So I, I thought this album was pretty decent. I'm not going to pull the disc out because it's in this this awful uh, little wallet uh, digi pack. I absolutely hate those. As is this next one. Uh, this is the Sturm on Drong album. I really like this one. Um, this one was also met with kind of mixed reviews. But I did. I found this one to be quite enjoyable. Definitely. Uh, one of the more enjoyable of their latter era albums. I'm not going to pull that one out either because it's in that little CD wallet there. Uh, then we have the Duke EP. Uh, this one was okay. I, I honestly did not spend just a ton of time with this one. Um, it was good to, to listen to a few times and then it just kind of got shelved. Then we have the uh, self-titled Lamb of God, and I got this one on eBay pretty cheap. I uh, haven't spent just a ton of time with this one, just to be completely honest with you. At some point, I probably will just kind of um, sit down and, and spend some time and, and kind of um, reintroduce myself to Lamb of God, for, for lack of a, a better term, but maybe have a little Lamb of God revival. And then I have the newest, uh, Omens. This one actually I thought was pretty good. And you can find this secondhand as I did. Uh, it has a price tag on there that says $3.99. But I got this, uh, I believe, on eBay. And it was close to that $3.99 price point after shipping. It, it was pretty much a free album um, if I just paid shipping. And you could, I guarantee you could probably go on eBay right now and find... Um, that album for not much more than what I paid. The, some people are just practically giving this away. And it's unfortunate. It is a, a solid release. I don't know if they just super overprinted it. Uh, I know a lot of people just uh, just aren't into Lamb of God anymore. Especially with uh, some of the things that, that went on with the band. I, I don't feel like it was his fault. But 
Uh, everyone has their own opinions on stuff like that. So I'm uh, going to move on and uh, continue on. Uh, first, next up, we have a uh, death metal. Uh, they started out death metal. I think they're doing power metal now. I own their very first two releases, and that's kind of the stopping point for me. Uh, I think it's the two albums that you definitely should check out. Uh, this is Lament with uh, Tears of a Leper. I love this album. Uh, this came out in 90, maybe 99, uh, in the 90s, sometime uh, mid to late 90s. Uh, is when this one came out. Killer death metal release. Uh, it is Christian death metal, but don't let that uh, deter you from listening to it because it is a phenomenal release. These guys uh, were killing it back then, and I, I actually overpaid a little bit for this release. It is a, an OG uh, press, but there were none. I couldn't find any uh, for sale when I, when I purchased this, and I don't know if it's gotten a repress or something as of late, but there has been a, like a significant drop in price. You can find this album uh, much cheaper than what I paid for it. And it is like if you're into old school death metal, if you're into death metal, this is one of those essential releases that you should have in your collection. And then I have their sophomore release. This one is entitled uh, Through the Reflection. And I think this one uh, came out. Uh, this is a repress. I'm pretty positive. It, this re was repressed in 2009. And I think the original was like 2000-ish when it came out. It's in this little, just a little cheap made uh, fold-out digi. But the album itself, the music on this is phenomenal as well. If you want to check out some Lament, I would go with uh, those two albums. If you check out some of their newer stuff, you'll probably be scratching your head and thinking, what the hell's wrong with me telling you that it's death metal because their new stuff is not death metal at all. I'm going to go a little bit for, further south uh, into Brazil for this next band, and it is like a 180 uh, as far as lyrical themes between uh, Lament being the Christian theme, and we have, um, I'm going to butcher this, La Masta, I believe is how you pronounce this, uh, this band, they are black and death metal, uh, very anti-Christian black and death metal, very uh, abrasive sound of this. This is not a band that's going to be for everybody just because of the abrasiveness of their music, but it is just some violent, uh, just uh, just heavy, uncomfortable stuff. Uh, this, this, this album that I'm going to show is entitled The Pandemonium Begins Here. I think this is their sophomore release. I, I was just completely taken aback when I first heard this. I, I wasn't quite sure uh, what to think. When I listened to it for that very first time, it, it, it definitely caught me off guard. It kind of bludgeoned me. And uh, it ended up growing on, on me so much that I ended up picking up another one of their releases. It's just something that I found myself uh, returning to when it can kind of make me feel uncomfortable, when it can kind of spark those emotions and stuff within me, that I know I'm listening to something special and something that I want to kind of investigate and, and dip into a little bit more. And uh, I picked up the, I think this is the follow-up to that. This is entitled Anonymous, uh, The Curse of La Mashta. And I am probably butchering that band name. Obviously, this is La Mashta, and this is uh, Anonymous with The Curse of La Mashta. But it's just, I, man, it, I, I, can't, I can't put into words just the... the emotions that this is able to bring out of me it's just like a spiritual warfare put into music i guess is the best way to do this i mean it's just a violent abrasive affair and i definitely want to pick up i know they have uh their debut album which is just entitled anonymous i want to pick that one up as well uh, i'm not sure if they have anything else out but it is a, a band that I, I want to dip my toes into a little bit more uh, next up, we have some death metal out of Phoenix, I'm wanting to say. Uh, this is Landmine Marathon with their debut album entitled Wounded. A pretty solid debut here. I, I do like this one. Uh, I like the uh, follow-up release a little bit more, but this is pretty solid. I, 
a lot of you may be familiar with Landmine Marathon. I'm not sure. Uh, they had a little phase there where they were pretty popular, and then I, I just didn't hear anything else about them for quite some time, so I'm not sure. But a uh, pretty decent death metal out of Phoenix. Uh, then I have this split that's uh, Landmine Marathon with uh, a band called Scarecrow. Um, I believe Scarecrow is out of California. They play a, a style of thrash that has this kind of throwback thrash feel to it, but I wasn't super impressed with their set on this uh, on this split, which is a bit unfortunate because I think musically they did a fine job, but the like the production values between the Landmine Marathon portion of this split and the Scarecrow uh, portion are just like night and day different. The Landmine has this... Uh, the landmine side has this uh, top-notch production sound, and then it's just like this camp, this campy scarecrow side, and it kind of uh, takes away a little bit from their their music, which is very unfortunate. And then we have what's probably my favorite full length from Landmine Marathon. This one is entitled uh, "Rusted Eyes Awake." Absolutely love this album. Uh, not a huge fan of the artwork on that, but the uh, the album itself is pretty phenomenal. I believe all of their uh, releases were released through Prosthetic Records. There we go on the inside. And then uh, I have the one that followed that up, which was actually my introduction into uh, Landmine Marathon. I got this in a, uh, in a grab bag at some point several, several years ago. Uh, this one is entitled Sovereign Descent. And uh, this one I, I do like as well. Uh, it can kind of rival the Rusted Eyes Awake is my favorite. Uh, musically, it's probably not on par, but it's just being that it was my introduction to this band, it kind of has that little soft spot for me where I find myself returning to this, trying to recapture uh, those feelings of hearing the band for the very first time. And then they had a follow-up to this one. Um, I'm trying to remember what the name, like Gallows or something like that was the name. I, I did not like that one, so I just never got around to picking it up. Uh, for some, one reason or another, that one just never clicked with me. Uh, sticking with Prosthetic Records, man, we have an album that came out last year that I was late getting around to pick i just recently picked this up uh just not too long ago had i had this in my possession um it probably would have hit my end of the year list because this is an awesome awesome album it's kind of blackened death grind uh and, and it's just i mean it, it's some killer stuff this is a languish with a feeding the flames of annihilation and I mean, it all, just the artwork, the name of the album, everything fits this music perfectly. Um, if you find, I always, it feels like I'm plugging my Instagram all the time now on this channel. But if you follow my Instagram, you probably saw me post about this one not too terribly long ago. And um, I was kind of on a kick where I was just listening to it over and over. I was getting new stuff in that was just being uh, kind of neglected because I wanted to listen to this. Uh, killer stuff there from Languish. Uh, next up, we have the newest full length from the band Lantern. Uh, this is entitled Dimensions. This was released on Dark Descent Records, I think, in 2020. Uh, killer black and death metal here. Uh, this is the only album that I own from them. This was actually my introduction to Lanterns. And uh, at some point, I want to backtrack and start picking up uh, some more of their discography because this was some, some pretty killer stuff. Anytime you see that Dark Descent, uh, logo, you know that you're probably in for something that's going to be enjoyable. I believe I got this in Metalhead Box, and that was a a, a, a killer release to get in Metalhead Box, and, and definitely a nice introduction into that band. Uh, next up, we have some kind of pagan folk music out of uh, Finland, maybe. Uh, this is Leokra with a uh, Home and Hearts. Uh, this is the only full length that Leokra has put out. I saw a pretty brutal review of this band at one point. It was like a guy trying to sing and playing the flute. And that was a, a pretty heartless review. I mean that I mean that works as far as the uh, the description of the band. The, the the flutes and stuff are definitely there, but I found the music to be much more enjoyable than the person that wrote that review, but it, it still makes me laugh that uh, 
when something like that where like people are just cold cold hearted uh with their assessments of something that someone's put their their heart and soul to man that, that that's brutal but the music on this is pretty good i, I do like it it's definitely uh it's, it's not something that you're going to listen to if you're looking to find something heavy uh, i would not call, really even call it folk metal it's more just folk music uh next up uh we have a i guess a post black a post black band uh kind of atmospheric post post black metal i believe they're out of mexico uh, this is Lasker with their debut entitled Absence. Absolutely love this album. As far as uh, debut full lengths go, absolutely love this. They put out several full lengths uh, after this, and they just haven't, uh, for me, hit like this, uh, this, this debut did. I know this one's been reissued and repressed several times. I said this band's out of Mexico. I'm kind of... Like leaning at this point to saying that they're out of Chile, uh, uh, it, it's somewhere in South America. Uh, for some reason, in my head I'm saying Mexico, but I believe it's the band is actually out of Chile. Uh, the absence, I mean, this this was a phenomenal. If you're into atmospheric black metal uh, and you haven't heard of absence. This is one that you definitely need to go check out. I think you will thank me for it. Uh, Lasker just absolutely killed it with that release. Their follow-up to that entitled Saudaji. Uh, that one's pretty good as well, but it, it just, uh, I, I liked it. I liked it enough to pick it up, obviously, but it just, it never reached the point of me where I loved it as much as that, that Absence release. And I think they put out three or four full links since this, and I just... And they just haven't resonated with me like the the, the beginning uh, of their career did. But uh, the first two, I could definitely recommend you pick those up. Honestly, I haven't picked, I haven't listened to uh, probably their last one and maybe even the one before that. It's just that uh, for me, I, I'm pretty I'm pretty set and, and happy just having those first two releases. Uh, next up, we have some old school death metal out of Canada. Uh, this is Last Wretch with Sadism and Severed Heads. If you saw my end of the year list, you saw this one on there. Uh, this is just a fun, if you're into old school death metal, this is old school uh, death metal recreated and done absolutely right. Um, have nothing bad to say about this release whatsoever. I still find this one enjoyable. It will still snap my neck off today, and it's just a, a fun thrill ride through Rift City. Uh, next up we have some prog. Uh, this is Last Scattering with Eidolon. Got this in a CDN Records grab bag. Uh, it's okay. It's uh, more prog rock as opposed to prog metal. Not really my thing, but uh, for what it was, it was a decent uh, listen. At some point I'll probably um, revisit it and come back and see if I like it a little bit more. If not, I may rehome it or something along those lines. And then finishing up, we're going to finish up with some sludge. Uh, this is a band called Latitudes, and this is their, I think, 2016 full length entitled Old Sunlight. Just looking at that artwork, you know you're in for some sludge there. And uh, I do enjoy this one. It is the only uh, album that I own from Latitudes. I actually got this on Indie Merch Store. They had a clearance sale going, and this one was on there for a couple of bucks. And I, with my love of sludge, I saw this. And I was like, yep, that's coming into the collection with me. And uh, auto-purchased it, and I have no regrets on that one whatsoever. That's all I've got for today. I uh, should have some stuff this week that I want to show, whether I'll get that showed or not. You know, I'm not going to make any promises. I, I drop the ball constantly on getting new content out. But uh, this is all. I'll be back next Sunday. We'll continue on with the City Collection and all that good stuff. Have a good week. Stay classy. Stay metal. All that stuff. And I will see you guys very soon.